Daryl Brooks. Don't try to address me like that like we cool. I don't consent to being called that name. Sovereign citizens. And my name is not Mr. Produce. This is not my name. I ain't no Marquis Lower. Who are you? What do they have in common? What jurisdiction is this civil or criminal? Is it civil or criminal? Civil or criminal. Everything. And yes, prove jurisdiction. Prove jurisdiction. Prove subject matter jurisdiction. Challenge subject matter jurisdiction. Is that lawful law? This is not lawful. Ah! And you're using it. Ah! Mr. Sheriff, do it. Use it. Put him back. Put your hands on me like that. Hush. Put your hands on me. Don't come back at me. Don't come back at Daryl Brooks, a man of many talents, a jack of all trades, if you will. I won't, but you might. He was once a bad rapper, a pimp, a pusher, a criminal. But what I know him as is a liar. A uh, liar? He wears a suit and goes to court and talks to the judge. Uh, I mean lawyer. I know him as a lawyer. So Daryl Brooks was the person that drove an SUV into a crowded Christmas parade. Police have now identified the driver who slammed into the crowd as 39-year-old Daryl Brooks. The aftermath left six dead and over 60 others injured. In court, Daryl Brooks decided to represent himself as a sovereign citizen, hoping that if he was just a good enough lawyer, he could be found not guilty. Today, I want to take a deeper look into sovereign citizen strategies in court and teach you guys how you could become a lawyer, just like Daryl Brooks. You might be asking yourself why. Why should I become a sovereign citizen? What do they actually do? And that is a great question. I didn't say I had an answer, I just said it's a great question. Okay, okay, I do have an answer. Because sovereign citizens are very smart people that study the law inside and out to find loopholes in the justice system that can be exploited and make it impossible to fairly try you in a modern day court system. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> Sounds like a good deal to me. I get to commit all the crimes I want and receive none of the punishments. Hell yeah. They're free people. They um, have all of the all of the rights of a U.S. citizen without following any of their laws. Well, that would just be pure anarchy nope. if that were the no, case. No, no, because so we're peaceful people. Oh, we're peaceful people. Place. Uh, yes, that too. We are a very peaceful people, for sure. And hey, if you like my video and think I should make more like this, let me know by liking and subscribing below. Are you telling me or are you asking me? No, no I'm, I'm asking. I'm not telling. I'm asking. Okay, thank you for correcting that because don't nobody tell me what to do. I would never tell nobody what, what to, to do. do. I, I would appreciate it if you would ask me. It is me exercising my right to represent myself as a sovereign citizen. Uh, I want to file a motion for self-representation. Do you I have, don't an, have attorney? an attorney? I don't have no need for I don't need an attorney. So let's begin with argument number one. Representation of thy own self. Or a self-representation in a smart way. It has to be put in a legal term. The bottom line is I need to... It's my right to appear for myself. I'm presenting myself. I'm saying I don't need them on my case. What do you ask? Do you ask me to remove them? Yes, sir. And are you going to represent yourself or are you going to hire another I attorney? I'd rather represent myself to I be an attorney. attorney. Have you hired an attorney? No, sir. Do you plan on hiring one? No, sir. Are you going to represent yourself or do you wish yes, to have sir. a public defender to represent you? No, sir. I'm going to represent myself. Literally every single sovereign citizen knows always represent yourself. Even if the death penalty is on the line. So you're looking at a total of 30 years in the Florida Department of Corrections if you're convicted of everything and you get the maximum sentence. And you're still wishing to represent yourself? Yes, sir. Mr. Camardi, you're asking to represent yourself next week. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay, you understand that you're looking at life in prison if convicted of two, two life sentences. Okay. You understand? If you see a sovereign citizen ask for a lawyer, you know somebody effed up. Despite Mark Heath's insistence that he wanted to represent himself thus far, he suddenly declared that he wanted Florida's highest paid capital litigation lawyer. But as long as you follow my tips, you won't have to worry about that. You'll be fine. This trial will be over before it even starts. Come on. It's always a good idea to represent yourself. And with argument number two, I'm going to teach you how to legally sack the judge right into an instant verdict. Sovereign citizen rule number two. No plaintiff, 
no case. And who would the plaintiff be in this matter? The state of Wisconsin. How can an entity file a claim? An entity cannot walk into anywhere and file a claim if it's not even a, a, a real person. Being the state of Washington, it seems to be me to be a fictitious plaintiff. In a sense, I can't subpoena a plaintiff that doesn't exist as a person. Who has a claim against me? Well, hey, if the plaintiff isn't a real person, then you gotta drop the case, right? I move, I move for a motion to dismiss. You still haven't even ruled on the claim. There's no one that has a claim against me here. You have a claim against me, ask who your name is, ma'am. Demand your right to face your accuser. They won't know, they won't know how to respond. It'll be hilarious. They'll have to drop the case. First of all, I have the right to face my accuser. I have the right to face my accuser. Is it not true that under the Sixth Amendment, I have the right to face my accuser? This was one of Darrell's favorite arguments. He even called the state of Wisconsin to the stand. Uh, the defense would like to call the plaintiff state of Wisconsin to the stand. Uh, but I'm not going to require the state of Wisconsin to testify in this case uh, because they are an entity and you have not named a person. And while you're at it, you might as well tell the judge what kind of court this is. You want to convince them that this is an admiralty court. Uh, sir, is this an admir uh, maritime admiralty law courtroom? A absolutely, it is. All courtrooms in this country are maritime admiralty law courtrooms that process people, aren't they? I'm supposed to be in this admiralty court. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, as in, like, admiralty law, common law, statutory? If we're in a common law court or an admiralty court. I asked you again, are we working under admiralty law, under statutory jurisdiction? One is criminal jurisdiction under common law, and the other is criminal jurisdiction under admiralty or military tribunal venue. And we should be in common law court. You guys are being treated as wrong under common law, under the United States Constitution. Uh, do you accept that uh, this is a maritime admiralty law? No. You don't accept that? This has nothing to do with admiralty, sir. It's, it's nothing to do with the sea, vessels, or anything like that, which are boats. And just as court is getting started, X, is this civil or criminal? Even though you're representing yourself and you should know this. Is it civil or criminal? What jurisdiction is this civil or criminal? You could use a lawyer if you can't tell the difference between a civil and a criminal case. So is it civil or criminal? What jurisdiction is, is the court under? Is it civil or criminal? Sir, I think Which you're confusing not. civil law with criminal law. That's what no, I'm saying. No, I'm confusing. I'm, can, I'm not confusing any law. I'm holding you in contempt. If it's criminal or civil, so I can hit right. you with you. I need to clear the courtroom because I do need I'm to make... I'm going to give you what you know is coming. I need him to go to the other <laughs> Your job here is to convince the judge that his courtroom doesn't follow the Constitution. Well, I would like to make an oral tennis motion to dismiss for failure to appear by the plaintiff. Therefore, it is illegal for you to process me through this courtroom, so you guys have to figure out something else to do it. If you could do that, end of case right there. Boom. It is crucial that I have the published rules and procedures so that I can conduct a fair defense and fair trial. Otherwise, this needs to be dismissed, and I would like it in writing, please. Trial didn't even start yet, and you're a free man or woman. We do have some female sovereign citizens, a, a lot less of them, but they still exist. When you have people like Brooks on the team, they kind of scare the girls away. <laughs> the third argument is all about faking it. You must learn to fake it till you make it. And just remember, it is not against the law to lie in court. Not against the law. Never claim to understand anything in trial. I don't understand that question because that's not what I see. You're right, I don't understand. You're charged with possession of marijuana, tampering of physical evidence, and possession of drug paraphernalia. I don't understand any of that. I don't possession. fundamentally understand that. Um, what are you asking me to do today, Mr. Kamal? You're saying I, I don't understand. This is just a trap. It can be used against you. So just never say I understand. Understands that a lawyer may be appointed if the defendant is indigent, freely waiving the right to be fact, represented by. Understand. You have to understand, sir, that if you choose not understand. to do that, I don't understand. I don't understand. Simply trying to understand why do I need ankle shots? So you did. You don't understand that. Is that correct? Understand what? This. I don't need anything in the jacket. I just want this. I don't think you understand. I 
I sit really down. don't understand, and that's why I said I don't understand. That's why I'm giving you to say something you don't understand. Will you let me know? I will most definitely will. So when you said before you didn't understand that, that you were not being truthful with the court, is that It's correct? a lot that's going on that I don't understand. Listen to me. You don't understand. You got, you got to talk to me in a, in a level where I got to Yes, understand. sir. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you the same level. But some of that I don't understand, understand because it's some shit so you don't under, you, don't, you don't understand what's going on? Now, if a judge does try to trap you into saying that you understand, there are other ways to say I understand without saying you understand. You could say I comprehend or I'm aware. I'm, I'm informed. Do you understand that? I don't understand. I comprehend. Um, you understand that the sky is blue, right? Um, I am aware, but I do not understand blue. You understand that the grass is green? I understand that you may perceive grass as green, but I am colorblind because my eyes do not understand. My question is, do you understand? I'm aware. Do you understand what it says, sir? It's clear to me what it says. Now, I know to the average person that might seem like the same thing, but trust me, in the legal court of sovereign citizen law, of admiral law, those are completely different things. You also need to remember the phrase, I don't understand the nature and cause of these charges. I don't understand the nature and cause of the action against me. It's a lack of understanding, which I don't have. I, I don't even understand the, the, the true nature and cause of the charges. This is like a sovereign citizen cheat code. Tell me what I don't understand you the nature and cause of the action against me because you don't establish jurisdiction. That's not what I'm asking you right now. Do you understand that charge? No, I don't understand the nature and the cause of the charge. All right, Mr. Marvin, me. let's just do a prelim. You may be more sympathetic about this flat earth nonsense. I don't understand any of those charges. Well, there's not a whole lot more. If you act like the charges don't make any sense to you, then the jury might agree. Uh, 10 counts of murder. That doesn't make sense. Not guilty. I can't really consent to being sentenced when I'm still trying to, I don't have, I don't understand. I, I have trouble with the comprehension. Like I said, it is fine to fake a few things. I encourage it. But one thing you never want to fake is your education level. It's nothing to be embarrassed about, okay? Most sovereign citizens drop out in 10th grade. How far did you get in school? Ninth grade. And you read and write? Barely, I can barely spell. Okay. How far did you get in school? Uh, ninth grade. Okay. You can barely read and write, is that correct? <laughs> I learned. Which, surprisingly, Brooks didn't drop out to the 11th grade. And how many years in school did you actually attend? 11 years. I'm surprised you waited that long to drop out. I mean, I, I kind of thought, you know, third grade? I didn't make it all the way through third grade for nothing. It's also not a terrible idea to fake a disability. Look, I'm just going to say it, okay? Fake a disability. What's wrong with that? That's what Brooks did. He pretended to be deaf in one ear. Any physical or psychological disability that you believe would affect you? Absolutely not. I'm doing a good job now. I can't hear anything you're saying. Mr. Brooks. So I'm the only one. I got one. Mr. I got Brooks. one ear that work and I heard that. Unfortunately, everyone became wise to Brooks's fake ailment when his impairment seemed to just come and go. Issue that he's brought up with being deaf in one ear. He was answering questions in the other room without the headphones on. He was called out not just by the state, but he was also called out by the judge. I believe that he is feigning his inability to hear and that he's done so throughout this case. But if they accuse you of lying about your disability, just tell them disabilities affect everyone in different ways. Can't argue with that, right? A good sovereign citizen never says that they're a sovereign citizen in court. To represent myself as a sovereign citizen. I said a good one, okay? Brooks was an idiot. He, he messed up. He corrected it later, though. He did. Claim to be a sovereign citizen and... Claim to be sovereign. The, Claim to be uh, sovereign. That's correct. You're kind of dabbling in the sovereign citizen stuff? No. So it sounds like yeah. it. Sir, you may, if you're going to do the sovereign citizen and all that, you may want to consider... Uh, having the attorney. I'm a private citizen, sir. I'm not a sovereign citizen. I'm a private citizen. Sadly, the rest of the world doesn't think sovereign citizens are smart. They say we're uneducated and don't follow 
real law. So it's better to hide the fact that we're sovereign for now. So you faked your sovereign status, your comprehension, and even a disability. So it should be no problem now to fake your name. I don't consent to being called that name. And my name is not Mr. Purdue, so I would appreciate if you didn't call me Mr. Purdue. Your Honor, Ms. Lewis is present. She does not wish to respond under this name. The trustee of the person is here, and all the beneficiaries have been already named. No identity, no charges. Uh, you made reference to uh, Mr. Brooks. Who's that? This uh, Daryl Brooks you made reference to. Who that? Good morning, sir. Please state your name for the record. I'm here as a third party intervener, intervener in that matter appearing as authorized representative for my client. Yes, sir, today I'm appearing as the agent and settler for David Hall. I am Princess Kalithia Hatan Tupac II, representing the entity Dejan Anderson. I appear here today as the settler agent, not the person, but the individual. And I, I, I don't think I should have, you understand the so difference the between a person and an the individual. Agent, and you're the individual, but you're not the person. Is that correct? Correct. Correct. Let me, I'm going to write that down. Hey, Mr. Morty. Uh, this name of this contract does not refer nor identify the male standing in this corporation. No, I'm Daryl Brooks with lowercase letters. You got the wrong guy, silly. My client, the straw man, I am not this name in all capital letters. I do not identify by that name, nor do I know that individual. And again, he's not the only one that makes this argument. You see this fictitious name statement, Asher Edwards, spelled in all capital letters? This is not my name. Without this name in all capital letters, that was issued without my consent. I am not the name that he is referring to in all capital letters and is identified by the state. I am not the all capital fiction. State your name for the record, please. Islam. I self law and master and proper persona, Sir Juris, Sir Harris of the land. Ma'am, I said state your name. Or your answer, Mr. Martin. Martin. Go in all capital, that's not me. That's a corporate that was created at my birth that I do not accept. That's not me. For an example, there's Markeith Lloyd. A man smart enough to deny his own name after killing a female cop and his pregnant girlfriend. Sir, you're here for the charge of murder of a- There ain't no Markeith Lloyd, who are you? You're being taken no to the next no courtroom. Don't try to address me Thank like you. that, like we cool. Who's this Marquise Lloyd? I don't know him. All right, you're here for murder of a law enforcement a officer. Oh, what is the crime? He's, he is Who makes the claim? Attempted murder of a law enforcement officer, carjacking with a firearm, uh, aggravated in assault. Black dress. May I have your name, please? The law states you can only try people. Sovereigns aren't people. So are you and David Hall one and the same person? I'm not a person, I'm an individual. David Hall is a person, I am a private individual. For the record, I'm not a person, I'm a human being. Yeah, every person is, I'm not a person, I'm a man. You check the Black Law Dictionary, you look the word person, because I'm not a person that y'all talk about. It's a, it's a fictitious person, it's a fictitious person in a corporation, which is not me. Now we should get on to the last couple of arguments. That um, actually, we didn't address subject matter jurisdiction. This oh, oh crap, how could I? How could I forget? Oh, SMJ? A classic. Of course we could, of course we could adjust subject matter jurisdiction. It's one of the best arguments that we have. Can you guys prove jurisdiction? Prove jurisdiction because I come in under common law. Is it proven subject matter jurisdiction? Argument number four. No jurisdiction, no power. Um, and the jurisdiction still has yet to be proven, which is another thing that needs to be challenged. You accept the challenge of the jurisdiction. The court has no jurisdiction. Well, I think we have to establish on the record first that you can have jurisdiction. Are we address the subject matter jurisdiction? This court has subject matter jurisdiction over crimes. Jurisdiction is a very popular argument, not just by Brooks, but with all sovereign citizens. Jurisdiction under criminal. You don't have subject matter jurisdiction or personal jurisdiction. Mr. Brooks. I have personal jurisdiction over you. There have actually been a couple cases that were dropped due to lack of jurisdiction. Both cases ended up being voided because there was no jurisdiction. If both cases that were just cited were voided by the Supreme Court for lack of jurisdiction, how is this case any different? Um, these were civil lawsuits. They weren't criminal cases. Unfortunately, they were both civil cases. Ah, it probably, it's probably fine. I'm sure it applies to criminal or, or admiral as well. Basically, what you want to do is bring this up over and over as much as you can. 
Like, you really want to drive them nuts with this. You want to make them crazy. There you go. Okay, that's, that doesn't prove that you have jurisdiction. I would like for you to prove such a matter of jurisdiction on the record, Your Honor. And yeah, you might look like an ass. But, I mean, come on. You should be used to that by now. Don't let the hot mic get you down. I can see why his attorney would drew. Oh, shit. Yeah, someone in the prosecutor's office is not muted. I'm going to remove you from the meeting at this time. Oh. Prosecutor's office is generally allowed to attend, to observe. It's people like that that have no respect for our justice system. If that happened to me, the trial would have been over. Can you say mistrial? Hey, you are to be removed right now. That, that was wrong. That, that, should be, that should be a mistrial. Now, let's talk about argument number five. Argument five is all about maintaining power. Bring up their oath of office. Make them give you a copy. I have all of them here. This way you can call it into question anytime things aren't going your way. I would like to um, see your oath of office. I'd like to see your uh, letter accepting and acknowledging your office. Mr. Brooks, Do I not have your oath of, of office? Under 906.11, this court has the authority are you saying that you have the authority to force me, a sovereign American man, that's going to send me to prison? Because this is what this comes down to at the end of the day. Yes. Wow. Okay. Thank you. That's the, that's all I wanted to hear. You, you have to uphold these oaths. All right. I'm going to have to excuse the jury. So any judge who does not comply with this oath of office to the Constitution of the United States. All right, I'm going to mute you, Mike. This is where you probably want to start telling them that they're your servant. You have to, as a public servant, Your Honor. I, I respect you being a public servant. A violation of your oath of office. If you did your duty under the Constitution, you need to do your job as a public servant. Mr. Brooks. And honor the oath that you I took, need to go Honor. Through the they are a public servant. That is true. And I want you to really let them know that. I want you to really drive that point home. They are but a servant to you. You can't, you can't listen. just disregard the United States Constitution. Which I, has I absolutely law. am not disregarding the you United are, States Constitution or the Constitution of, of the state Your of Honor, Wisconsin. are you not a public servant? Some situations, you won't be able to fight with legalese. You might have to resort to a sovereign citizen's last defense, the hissy fit. You don't have no integrity. How can you even call yourself a judge? Making tacit agreements. Is a tacit agreement. Is that a tacit agreement that you have? I don't know what's going on, and I don't think this is a fair trial. Okay. They haven't had a trial yet. I'm happy I just want this I'm to be fair, to and it hasn't been fair. Who has the right to tell the living man when he can speak and when he cannot speak? You don't interrupt the judge, whether you're a flat earther or not. I'm not. If you interrupt me one more time, I'm going to find you in contempt and you're going to go to jail. Objection, please. All right, please. Oh, please stand up. Oh, stand up. No. Stand up. Pick me up. Some people think it's a bad strategy for sovereign citizens to constantly get kicked out of the room. But I say no. It's not a bad strategy. It's a genius strategy. Yeah. Because the jury needs breaks. They need to move their feet. They're stuck there all day just listening to boring trial. Give them an extra break. They will appreciate that. They'll be able to stretch their legs, maybe have a sandwich, maybe go on Twitter or check the news. They'll be grateful for that. Go ahead and take you into custody. Under what charges? Under, the, your, Under what charges? You are disrupting my court. All right, we're going to pass your case to tomorrow. We'll take him to jail and we'll make an arrangement later to discuss it. Are you arresting me for you? Mr. Fedora, you're going to jail. St. Joe County Jail. I'm, I'm telling you that this is not lawful. Ah! Is that lawful law? Oh my God. Get out! Lawful. Get out! That's not lawful. Get out! Is that lawful law? Another one, I don't want to hear another word. No, put him out. Put your hands on me like that. Hush. Get him out of the courtroom. Attempt to court and take him into custody. Really? God's sake. Clayton Hines, you are guilty of conducting a military crime with court reporter. I'm an officer. He's not following the procedure and the court has no jurisdiction. I find that you're in contempt. You're going to jail to right now. Court. Don't touch me. You're not going in, sir. But the records show that you just battered me. Step back. And you're using... Oh! Oh! Stop. 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 Mr. Sheriff, do it. Use it. Ah! 
It's been a long day and a half. Leave your hands off me. We'll come back at the end. It's time to get across me. He is or agree to what you are doing. Your lack of consent is noted for the record. I don't give consent. Oh shit. I I think I might have the wrong defense. What what am I saying? No. No. No, I'm forgetting rule number one, okay? Never be discouraged by failure. Sure, this theory has never actually worked out before, but that that doesn't discourage anyone. Thousands of sovereign citizens are still relying on this. They still believe in this for a reason. It has to be worth something, right? So, that was How to Be a Sovereign Citizen Lawyer. And after watching this video, I'm pretty confident that you're going to be able to stand up for yourself and get away with 70 counts of involuntary manslaughter. You're welcome. I'm Lord AC. I hope you guys like and subscribe. Peace.